joining me live at the desk. Movie analyst himself, Shane A. Bassett. How are you, Shane? Hello, mate. I'm doing very well and I'm excited. I'm very excited for the Oscars. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a tick. But The Great Escaper yeah. is supposedly Michael Caine's, the great Michael Caine's last movie. Well, he's still with us. It's mm. not because of that. He just announced his retirement, though, and this mm. will be his last film. But I've heard actors do that before. I mean, we've had Anthony Hopkins recently say he's finished acting, but he's been in some great films lately and he hasn't given up. So I think Michael Caine's got another movie or two in him. And this one's a true story. And it's absolutely exhilarating how it spreads out to his story because he was a senior citizen, this man, Mm. escapes from his retirement home, goes to France because he wants to attend the D-Day anniversary. And he was part of it, the original what happened. So it means a lot to him. So there's emotion, there's comedy, but it's got that British wit with a lot of heart. It's a oh. movie with a big heart. What do you give it? I would give it four out of five. Four out it's five. a little movie that I don't think people are going to know, but it's a British film that needs to be seen. All right, I'll make sure I get to look at that one. Now, Imaginary involves a fluffy teddy bear, but that's... <laughs> Look, it's not the best-selling angle, but apparently this movie's pretty good. Yeah, I'll sell it to you, OK? Yeah, yeah. Uh, people will be on the fence for this movie, though, definitely, but I enjoyed it myself. Mm. Uh, it is about an imaginary friend, a fluffy teddy bear called Chauncey, and the uh, lady who had her, had the teddy bear when she was little, comes back to her childhood home, finds it in the cupboard. Now, that bear used to talk to her as a child, but still does... But he's not happy because he was in the cupboard all this time. <laughs> he could blowing get up. Out. He's blowing up and uh, he causes all sorts of trouble. Now, it's a bit different to Drop Dead Fred. I don't know if you remember Drop Dead Fred with that imaginary friend in the 90s. That was a classic film. And it was family friendly. This one is not family friendly. I jumped out of my seat at least three times during this film. It has got jump scares. It's, it's sort of wry in its delivery. But it's a creepy bear. I'm trying to sell it to you. Oh, no, don't worry, you're it's selling it. It's actually pretty good. The bear, I can the... see people won't like it, but I actually liked it. Yeah, the, the coverage, <laughs> the overlay that we're looking at, is he looks fairly innocuous, but uh, that makes Chauncey. you even, even more fascinated by it. Now, uh, Desperation Road? Right? Oh, Mel Gibson. I mean, he's sort of had a resurgence lately, and he's, but these movies have been under the radar and, and streaming, and people don't really know about him, but he's had some good performances, including this one. He's back at the top of his game, Mel Gibson. He plays a dad whose son comes back from jail unannounced, but it's okay because they've got a good connection and he takes him in, but he also meets another girl, but they've got a connection. She's homeless, takes her in, and then trouble follows. Mm. Uh, And Mel Gibson, he's just doesn't say much, but his performance is uh, exhilarating in a sense where he stands up to be counted, and I like Mel Gibson. And we're talking about Oscars in a minute. He won for Braveheart, of course. Yep. He's had his troubles, but this is a movie I highly recommend, Desperation what, Road. What do you give that? Three. And what do you give Imaginary? Because I didn't ask you. Imaginary, maybe a three as well. Three, OK. Well, they're both worth watching. Yes. All right, Oscars. Yeah. Is it going to be Oppenheimer all day again? Yeah, it'll be Oppenheimer uh, from start to finish. I think there'll be a few surprises in a, in a way that I think Poor Things and The Zone of Interest are the only two movies that might actually win against Oppenheimer. But it's 13 nominations. It'll win at least 11, I predict. Uh, it'll be a fun ceremony because Barbie yeah. is involved. Uh, even though Margot Robbie's not nominated, they'll have a, the music and a whole production of the, the sounds and the production design from Barbie's also nominated. So they'll dress it up, I think. But Oppenheimer, if you haven't seen it, you probably won't understand the articulate nature of the film mm. and how detailed it is. It yeah. deserves its 13 nominations and almost will get a clean sweep. Yeah, I really enjoyed Oppenheimer. I really did. Now, you'll have your popcorn ready on Monday and we'll talk all about it next week. The champagne's on ice <laughs> and uh, suit is ready. I can't wait. Yeah, popcorn, I might make that on the day. OK, enjoy it gets, the Oscars. It gets too stale. It absolutely <laughs> does.